the Malt Liquor Project 3. Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor, introduced in 1962 by Evansville Brewing of Evansville, Indiana. This brand was bought by G. Heilman in 1972. Stroh's picked up G. Heilman in 96. Paps bought out Stroh's in 99. And then some of their brands were sold off to Miller the same year. And Mickey's was one of the brands that Miller wanted to get their hands on. Uh, in 2001, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, originally they said it was 01. They dropped that. They were mistaken. Sometime in the 90s, they introduced Mickey's Ice Brewed Ale, which is a little bit stronger, 5.8. This is 5.6% alcohol, and oddly, it has the exact same specs <coughs> as Magnum Malt Liquor. And I mean exactly. Alcohol, calories, grams of fat, everything. Which makes one wonder if it's not the same beer put into two different containers and labels. Here's an old Sterling can from 1997. I bought this right, bought this, uh, right before they went out of business. Sterling is gone. Sterling beer is gone. No one picked up the brand that I'm aware of, but this one is still around. So let's check out Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor. I started drinking this in 1996, and I've enjoyed it. You always got your little weird bar room riddles in the inside of the cap. Here's the barrel, the beer barrel bottle. Some people call it a grenade, but if you look carefully, it's actually designed to look like an old-fashioned wooden beer barrel. Okay. And these old barrels were made by what? Coopers. The pe people were known as Coopers. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no skunk. Um, not much of a head in this wide brim glass. Uh, you can see over the years the shade of green has changed. Now here's the 1996 bottle. It's a lot lighter green. And then around 98 when it went with a deeper, richer green. And then the cap and the the label design actually changed a little bit. That's a 96 can. Has the man holding the brick bat, a little castle. And the, the clovers here we have the and it did have the fighting hornet on the side. See the fighting hornet? There it is. Mickey's is famous for the little battling hornet. And that's the ice brood ale, which we cannot, like I said, get in Louisiana. I'm gonna have to buy that again if I go on one of my cross America trips. <clears throat> now Mickey's uh, much like Magnum, which started as a Miller brand, is Typical for a malt liquor. It's clear, golden, bubbly. And it's a traditional malt liquor, meaning that it's got extra strength. Most beer is 4.5 to 5% alcohol. This one is 5.6. So when malt liquor first came out in the late 40s, really got going in the 50s and 60s, it was extra strength, meaning around 5.5 to 6%. Then in the mid 90s, late 90s, we started getting the high gravity malt liquors, which is almost like a separate class. You're getting up into the 8, 9, 10. In extreme cases, extreme cases, 15% alcohol. But I've found through my drinking excursions that the higher the gravity with these malt liquors, the, the quality tends to drop. You get up to 15%, your Super Brew 15 and you're looking at some bad stuff. Uh, there are exceptions. Uh, the Austrian produced EKU 28 is a high gravity malt liquor at 11%. <clears throat> very good, very good stuff. Your uh, Santa Claus, the regular classic and the Hellas from, I'm sorry, the EKU's from Germany. The, uh, the Santa Claus from Austria 
that's 14%. That's an extreme, ultra gourmet, expensive, and super strong malt liquor. And it's very good, but it'll floor you. If you drink one 11.2 ounce bottle, watch out, you're going to have some problems. This is very mild and much more, to me, enjoyable to drink. It's easy going. It's, it's got a light mouthfeel. Get, you can pick up the yellow corn grits, the bready barley malt. It's got a little bit of hoppiness there. These usually are around 17 IBUs. Regular Miller beer would be about 12. When you got the extra sweetness, they'll up the bitterness a little bit to balance that out. So it comes across as really no more bitter than regular beer. But I bought the. You don't really have Mickey's too much around here. It used to be in most of the stores. Now. Really no one carries it except racetrack, gas station. I saw the 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 six pack of twelve ounce bottles for um even this shade of green looks a little different. It was four forty nine for the six pack. But you you're looking at um a light body, light to medium body, does have a little body to it. Um a bold beer taste, but not super bold. I mean, the overall character of Mickey's is its mellowness. And you have a crisp, clean, refreshing finish. Um, there is a sports bar in Metairie, Louisiana, on Veterans Boulevard, and they have Mickey's pretty prominently displayed in their cooler. And, uh, and they have a lot of them, so it must be pretty popular there. Um, Mickey's does sort of have a cult following. A lot of people have discovered its unique and pleasant little character. So, I would be interested to see if you start your own malt liquor project, drinking through the brands, you trying Mickey's, and giving me your feedback. It's really interesting to do this. Um, I had started the Malt Liquor Project on another channel. I didn't really like the way those were coming out, so I killed that. And like I said, Google doesn't really like people having two accounts. They want it all under one YouTube um, slash Google Plus account. So that's pretty much how I'm going to do it. So check it out and uh, let me know what you think. I'm going to enjoy drinking the whole six pack. This is the first of the six pack. Uh, I had it really cold in the uh, freezer. It's better when you're drinking malt liquors, probably to have them ice cold, about 33 degrees. Um, when they warm, they kind of lose their uh, their good flavor. Now, something like the Santa Claus, when it warms, it gains flavor. Thank you for your video viewing consideration.